Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is Medit Easy for you uh, with a new video on a guide on how to prepare for your university examinations. Uh, today the subject that I've taken up is obstetrics and gynecology and uh, this is meant for the university subjective examinations that uh, many of you will be given uh, at the end of this year. I don't really know of, uh, how useful this video is going to be down the years because soon the subjective examinations are going to be replaced with the next examinations. But anyways, for people who will be giving this examination at least this year uh, might benefit. And uh, I would like to also say that this video is for somebody who is just starting with their preparation and they don't know what resource to use. They're lost in this entire portion of resources. They're worried about how their practical examinations need to be curated um, and uh, the rest of it. So I'll be sharing my personal experiences of how I uh, went about planning my preparation of what resources that I used for myself particularly and how I ended up after the examinations. Uh, you all can just quickly uh, watch this video on a higher speed. Uh, there are a few slides with a few condensed information of how to do. So let's get started without any delay. So the first step will be definitely that you have to complete your syllabus and know your concepts. So I would not advise you at this point to go back and check the question papers of the previous year. You, you can definitely go and have a very quick uh, review, a quick review of uh, the question papers at least of the past 10 years of whichever state you are in. So review the question papers, just check up on the, the, the broad uh, type of categories which come in your LAQs or your SAQs and uh, have an idea. But don't go about, you know, specifically doing one question at a time of this particular question paper because at this point, you need to know your entire chapters, your entire syllabus. So the first thing that has to be done at this point is to watch your video lectures from whichever resources you are referring to. And additionally, I would say reinforce. But before going to that, let me tell you about the video lectures part. So for the video lectures, I'd say that um, either you can use DAMS or you can use Naro or any other that you have, it doesn't matter. The only thing is you know and you learn your subjects from somebody who knows it better and definitely all of these have the best facilities, uh, I mean best faculties for these particular subjects. So in terms, uh, I personally used Maro because I had my subscription for Maro in this year and uh, the very common question that I've heard from my own juniors is they keep on asking me that it's too vast so how to go about it. Uh, I'd advise you to segregate in this uh, scenario. So what do I mean by segregating? So by segregating I mean that uh, when I started watching it, I was in my third year. I just watched a few videos in my third year, at the end of my third year, when I had my first uh, OPS and Kylie postings. And uh, at that point, I had my edition five videos, because at that point, we had the edition five videos in this. And you know that in the very first posting that you have in OPS Kylie, what you are being taught is the basics of history taking, and then you're taken towards the basic uh, cases which are asked in your examinations, like PIH, diabetes, that is gestational diabetes, and like anemia. That was all that I was taught at that time. And the basics of examination, like a few, uh, you know, grips and about this dream, about the weight and so on. <clears throat> so at that time I had gone about in that order. But now when I came in my final year and I had my postings again in the beginning of the year itself, the first posting I had was pediatrics and followed by that I had my obstetrics and gynecology. So what I did is I segregated this particular set of videos into a few groups. So the first group for example was uh, the medical aspects, you know, medicinal aspects of uh, obstetrics and gynecology, the medicinal aspect. The group second was, uh, no, this was not my second group because this came in the middle of the series of the videos but I kept it later. I watched the group uh, 2, which was for me, maternal pelvis, skull, labor, so everything related to the labor and examination of the mother and so on. And also, another group which comes before this, for example, uh, the other group which contains everything about the basics of pregnancy, the placenta and stuff. You can keep it um, anywhere between these two or after, um, after that. This particularly, I kept it later, which was the last or maybe towards the end, because it was all about the obstetric complications, you know, obstetric complications related to washing, to pick uh, GTDs or anything which was related to antipartum hemorrhage and hemorrhage in early pregnancy. So I kept it for later because by that time you are prepared with your basics in pregnancy, you're prepared with labor. Also, because you have to attend the labor room in your first time, so you need to know this stuff because otherwise you feel like an alien that uh, when group two, this group, the first group is important for taking cases like the basics of anemia, pregnancy, diabetes, and hypertension. So you not really need to follow the order of videos which are being given in your uh, uh, Maro videos. But you can make your own set of videos uh, as a group and then organize according to your needs based on if you're attending your postings. What do you need to know first? What do you need to know later? And accordingly, you can uh, prepare and plan. Uh, I would also say that you go one group at a time or maybe combine two groups. For example, if you're watching anemia, then followed by that you watch the and pelvis and skull. So you know a few part of the medicinal aspect, you know a few part of the liver aspect and the examination. Then you come towards diabetes and pregnancy and then you might do for terminologies and you So this is how you can club two groups or you can do one of them at a time. But always group one group or two groups at a time and that's how you complete it. You won't have to worry about uh, not being able to complete or the anxiety of these so many videos which have to complete so many are you going to complete your syllabus. So keep that as anxiety away, go one group at a time, do those videos properly, know your concepts and eventually you will be there. So that was my advice about how to go about watching a video lectures. Uh, the second thing which I'm adding here might not be really important, but for me, uh, I really don't depend upon only videos to understand something. So unless and until I read something on my own, I feel like I'm not 
to prepare the subject. So the second thing I would do always is try to read as much as I could. It was not necessary that I read a book from cover to cover, you know, first page to last page, I never did that. But I did try to read the texts. So the one which I read, and obviously many of us read, is Datta. That is the book which we read. Uh, again, uh, especially I'd like to uh, note a few topics which I did and I would like him to do as well is regarding diabetes, PIH, anemia. Definitely do anemia if you can from Datta. Uh, I did a few uh, preliminary chapters which are given the beginning of Tata, which is regarding lo normal labor physiology. It's also one of the questions in your uh, previous year uh, question papers to physiology and it also helps us understand better about what labor is like and why the steps of labor are so. You know, the, the, the concept of retraction, the muscles which are responsible for dilatation, the cervical canal, so everything. Uh, basics of the third stage of management. So, what exactly the physiology is behind the third stage that you're managing in that particular way. So, if you can do these particular chapters, you can do it. It will be very good if you can do it. I also did this few chapters itself, this medical medicinal aspect, a part of physiology. And and, and, and some part of your uh, obstetrical complications. Okay, so this was all about understanding your video lectures and about reading a particular uh, you know section from the textbook. Once you're done with this and gradually, slowly, over a period of time, uh, when you go through your postings and you're doing this simultaneously, you'll be able to complete uh, much of your syllabus. Even if some part is left behind, you can still do it at a later point. But the basics and the comments are, the common topics have to be done. Uh, I would also tell you that even if you cannot complete your know, radiology in uh, obstetrics or those particular uh, uh, integrated sections that ma'am has taught you can keep them for later first and foremost focus on the basic uh, basic groups which i have pointed out here read them and then towards the end go towards the integration and it will make even more sense when you do it that way because towards the end you might be uh, uh, you know, aware of many of the topics in this particular subject so that integration becomes easier now the second thing is to also focus upon the practical point of view of the subject so you can't just keep going about the theory and not know the practical point because that's also an important aspect of your examination uh, coming towards the practical uh, preparation of the subject from the practical point of view only, my advice to you is to make a list. Now, what do I mean by making a list? Is go and ask your seniors or your teachers about the pattern of the examination of on what you know broad sections that the examination is conducted. That is the case presentation, the instruments, uh, the drugs, and uh, the specimens. So whatever it is like for your uh, medical college, you just ask them about the pattern, and then you make a list for yourself. So the list which I'm talking about is, for example, this is my list which I had made for myself. This is in my OBGY and post practical examination. So you can see the date here is uh, towards the right hand corner of the list. You can see there is a 15 June 2022. So that is when I had my end post examination around, or maybe it was a few days later. So I had my my own list of what I had to prepare. So there was these obstetric cases. Then there, there was this contraception, drugs, dynamic sheets, in cases, instruments. Obviously, I had to I had to complete my journal and my pelvis and fetal skull with labor part because that's also a uh, part which is asked in the examinations. So first of all, I made my list. Under the obstetric cases, you can see I have this entire list on the right hand side, which is anemia, PI, GDM, arch, like the case, previous LSCs, which way. A part of it I was not not able to complete before the end post, but definitely I had to complete it before my actual final examination, final university examination. Uh, contraception, I did it from marrow itself. For the cases, definitely I did my uh, concepts from the marrow. Uh, video lectures, the notes which I had made, actually used the printed notes itself, and uh, a few part from the that 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 extra, for example, anemia, PIH, and GDM, the pictures which have been given, a few tables which have been given, and that that referred to those. And then for drugs, I referred to uh, the section of drugs which is given towards the end of that that syndromic management kits I used one of the CDC guidelines given on the net. Uh, for gynec sheets, I used my particular college gynec sheets that they had provided us with and prepared them from my own notes from Maru. For instruments, I'd like to tell you that there is, uh, I think most of you know that uh, there is a video on instruments by Dr. Sakshi Arora Ma'am on YouTube. So I used that video and had another PDF for containing all the instruments. So I'd use that video to annotate on those, instru on those uh, you know, instruments given in that PDF. So I had this two clubbed source of that PDF and Ma'am's lecture together. And then uh, the journal is what I completed for myself. There's nothing new about that. And I did pelvis fetal skull with labor. This is from uh, Maro itself because it, give, it has been given really good in it. there. I did not have to refer. You know, in any other any other source, matter was enough for this. So you can also make your own uh, list like this and uh, gather your resources for doing them. And then towards the end, what you have to do is simply revise from wherever you've done. Uh, next thing is this particular video. I can share this link with you. You can find yourself on YouTube. This is the video which I used for understanding the practical aspect of examination. So yeah, it has been given in Maro. It's given in the you know text form. But if you want to see somebody doing it, you'll also see it in your own clinical posting at your medical college. But this sir has taught really good about what and how things have to be done from the practical point of view. So it is good if you could go and watch this video whichever you like. And my one of my advices is also to save, write down, fair your presented cases for yourself and revise them towards the end before going to the examination. Because uh, you can just you know, highlight the essential points, for example, a negative history for one specific case, like negative history for anemia or negative history of PIH. And uh, what specific examination points go for these particular cases? For example, you have to 
look for edema in anemia so edema in anemia is not only in the physiological aspect uh, physiological anemia which is dependent but it is also elsewhere also in pih the co same goes you know uh, for liver disorders in pregnancy you might have to look for jaundice uh, for previous lscs you have to look for this lscs scar so those forget it uh, in the anxiety of the examination so it's very good if you can like uh, make your own uh, mental notes of what has to be asked for and what has to be looked for in this specific case so save your presented case is my next advice for your uh, reference i can show a few of my cases which i had taken and i had saved for myself so here you go and this is a pdf which i shared with one of my juniors of three cases which i had taken there are many more but these are the specific ones which i found useful for myself so i shared it with her this was the case i had taken about uh, a female who had come with the uh, previous lscs uh, but she also turned out to be a case of liver disorder in pregnancy so it was a clubbed case because it included questions from both liver disorders as well as previous lscs so everything about the negative history then sir also taught me that i should not only uh, you know confine myself in asking about the liver disorders and negative history only for liver disorders because she came with a complaint of itching all over the body so i also had to include the dermatological aspect over it so if it was associated with physiological itching which occurs because of stretch marks or it is systemic because of some systemic infection or uh, because of a particular uh, disorder in pregnancy which is called pruritus prurigo prurigus associated with pregnancy something like that i remember now it is called puppa so he taught me a uh, few of those points and it came so handy for me because i got the same case in my practical examination i mean not the same person but it was a liver disorder in pregnancy which i came which came for my preliminary practical examination uh, in obstetrics and gynecology and at that time i had not revised liver disorders but because i had discussed all of this in in my in post examination i'm sorry before my post examination during my normal clinical post it, it, it came so handy for me and it helped me get good grades in this examination that was the preliminary one then <clears throat> the point about how to take the past obstetric histories for this person this was important because lscs ka history tha so she had a full term delivery by lscs in view of fetal distress probably because of passage of meconium and we also know that liver disorders especially this one which is um, pruritus of pregnancy causes meconium this uh, causes fetal distress and passage of meconium as a complication so probably that was the reason why she had to go to lscs in the post pregnancy and so on so yeah this is the one of that case and the next case was anemia in pregnancy so i had fed it and wrote it down for myself to be able to revise it uh, before the examination to know what all points are important and uh, about the systemic examination before having examination and how to write the diagnosis what is the particular order of writing the diagnosis so it will be very helpful if you can keep a few cases written down for yourself okay uh, what is my next advice to you is if you can make some time you can refer to this any of the practical guides that you have so i use this book i won't mention the name but if you want i can share it with you in comment down below uh, so this is the book i used for my practical preparation uh, not all of it because definitely you cannot read so many books you don't have you have a limited time you have to complete so many subjects this is the book i'll show you which chapters i did so there is uh, the first chapter which i did was history and examination i had highlighted the important ones so that just before the examination i could, could go to through these highlighted points so for example what is the duration of pregnancy then what is exactly the nature rule and what is the assumption that it's based upon then a few the few definitions of parity nally para prime para grand multi para elderly grand, grand and so on the medical history and its importance in obstetri obstetrics and gynecology also about the what are the drugs that you have to take care of if the patient is taking so the diatogenic drugs so stuff has been given in a com you know, compiled manner within this one particular chapter so it was helpful during the history taking an examination and also about the braxton hicks contraction a little bit theory about it about how to prepare the patient for examination so she should empty her bladder should be comfortably lying down a verbal consent is needed a female chaperone should be present so <clears throat> a few of these points within one chapter was helpful for me to revise before the exam also there's this one table here just why when is the height of the uterus not corresponding with the period of gestation so this is a common question that any case you get you might be asked these few general points so even if you don't specifically prepare for pih or gdm and you don't know these general points and you're not able to quickly recall you might suffer you know so it's important so it's important to keep an eye on the general aspects of obstetrics and not just not just focus on the broad uh, questions or broad uh, diseases that they ask for in the cases okay so this is the first chapter that i did and then i directly skipped on to the next chapter which is chapter 9 and there was cases in gynecology so again in this i'm sorry not cases in gynecology it's chapter of cases in obstetrics Mm -hmm. so here it's chapter five yeah so this is a chapter and i did not do all of them i can see i did anemia in pregnancy from you i did uh, a few points on previous lscs i did hypertensive disorders and then i did rh isomerization and cardiac disease i think i did this few four five chapters from you and why i did this was just because i was so bored of revising it from one source so it's not that it's bad to revise from one source but at times you know the, the kundu pattern where you're being given question and answers so you are able to revise in a different manner so you're asking yourself questions and able to recall and try to recall so that is the pattern just in this book so there are a few question and answer point of view like development of physiological anemia and pregnancy what are the causes you quickly read you don't have to you know uh, read it as if you have to pick again it's just to test yourself and to see if you remember things from what you've read before and uh, this beautiful thing about this book is they have given this table and they have written down of what 
in for example here is the case of an event right so what is the history of presenting complaints in this patient might come to you what is the dietary history related important aspects in these patients so vegetarians like to develop iron deficiency what is phacophagia and uh, you know whatever is important regarding dietary history in anemia the history of hemorrhage in anemia the history of obstetrics in anemia so any multifactor pregnancy in the past or any history of frequent intervals of uh, delivery or excessive blood loss at the time of delivery so these are important obstetric aspects what is the social social economic history important why is behavioral history important why is medical history important what is their importance so this table even if you can't go through the entire chapter you can go through this table one table at a time for example if you're going to present a case of previous lscs tomorrow so just open this book read this particular table to help you a lot in the presentation and understanding right so this is what i also will advise if you have some time you can do it it's not necessary it's just a resource which i used and i wanted to share okay now so we're done with the practical point of view as well now is the time that when you're done with your syllabus and you know where to prepare your practicals from you have a few cases written down for yourself that now you start compiling it and you compile it with previous year questions this is the time probably two to three months before the examinations that you sit down with all your notes with all your cases and now you start revising so now you're revising not just from your book but now you're taking this previous year questions ka pdf whichever you have so this previous year questions ka pdf you start taking and then you do one question at a time see if you're able to answer it just go through the textbook or your notes once and uh, whatever highlighted text you have from that or from that notes you can go through and mentally prepare your answers i was not somebody who would write down my answers from pyqs and never had the time to do that i don't think anybody has but you can always uh, pick up a question and quickly go through your notes and take book of how you're going to answer it and that's how you come towards a point where completion of the subject seems possible where it does not very this this point does not come very early on your preparation it almost is very close to your examination you finally feel that probably you're completing your syllabus and once you're done with that i think you will be there and you are there with the completion of the subject very close towards your examination and, and i think at this point you should be satisfied about you you know went through this entire process you planned for it and you focused on understanding the subject rather than just going directly by previous year questions in the beginning and uh, by the end i'll tell you when i was at the end and this is my university examination result my obstetric and gynecology result and this is what i got in the overall my 77.5 percent was a distinction in obstetrics and gynecology it was really really rewarding but anyways your goal is not to get a distinction or to talk or whatever because unless and until you know your concepts well and you put in the efforts that is all that matters uh, later down the line probably when you'll be sitting like in an, as an intern uh, in the phc and a pregnant lady comes to you for her general checkup and you notice and you find out that she has a very high blood pressure at this point if you could make it to know what to do next is before referring this patient what you can do on your behalf is once check her ankle reflex and in case her ankle reflex is brisk then probably consult a senior around you and probably prepare or arrange for a magnesium sulfate injection to prevent an episode of preeclampsia that is all you need to do that is all you need to reach and i hope this was a uh, uh, helpful for you this entire guidance of what resources and how to go about it and if you want those pdfs which i had shared with you and the uh video link which i've sh shown to you if you want uh, i can share that with you you can comment down below thank you so much